the Reverend Dr. Janie Spar. I'm so thrilled to be with you. And and when I thought of that theme, too, as as Floyd and I were talking, I thought so much of you. Who St. Andrew is to me? And I want to name some people in your roots, okay, that have been with me and how we um, came together. And I want to name James and Deanna Noel. And I want to name John and Lily Irvine. I want to name Dolores and Billy. I want to name Gordon and Margaret, some of you that were there with me right from the beginning. And so from your roots, your roots touch my roots. And here we go. So will you pray with me? Wonderful God, we thank you for those in heaven who we call to be with us, for those who are here right now, who want to be awakened by you, who want to feel you close inside. So be inside us. Let us feel you so close. Oh, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much for this church. Blessed be. Well, when I thought of roots, I thought of how our roots connected a long time ago. And, and since you have had testimony, I want to testify to what this church has meant to me and who you mean to me all these years. We have been together, whether you've known or not, 40 years. Yes, at least 40 years. And I'm getting old here. I just turned 79. So, you know, so I've known you a long time. And with that, I want to tell you some of the roots and what you have done for me and what you have done for the community that I serve. When I came out as a lesbian, the church <laughs> used to like me because I was one of the women ministers, right, Margaret? We were one of the women ministers that were coming along. And it was like, oh, dear God, what has happened to Janie? <laughs> and who was it who I turned to? I turned to James Noel. I turned to Deanna, I turned to John and Lily to look to, to Dolores. And I said, this is who I am now. This is who I've become. So the presbytery, you remember, there was a big study about sexuality and about what, who were these people and all this kind of thing. And so the presbytery was doing this study. And James, I found this out years later, by the way, they were having meetings about what kind of a person might lead this ministry. And it was James Noel who walked into a room and he said this. Oh, they were talking about having somebody who wasn't gay. Surely that was the right thing to do. They were all afraid. And so and James walked into this meeting and he said this. Right now. St. Andrews needs a black pastor, and that be me. And right now, this denomination needs a gay pastor, and that's got to be Janie Spar. And the only reason that I am here today and have done this ministry for 40 years is because James Noel walked into that meeting and said that very thing. So I am forever grateful to this church and to James. The next thing that happened was they said, well, where are you going to have your installation? I said, well, I'd like to have it at St. Andrew Presbyterian Church. And, and they said, well, watch this. I got phone calls. Ready? Now, I had had a ministry in the inner city in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So I, I learned a lot about racism, right? I learned a lot about its ugly head. So watch it. So these are the phone calls I was getting. Well, Janie, are you sure you want to have it at St. Andrews? See, but I would say, well, well, why wouldn't I have it at St. Andrews? You know, and then it would get quiet because they were afraid. See, they were afraid to say, well, you know, you know. 
So they said, well, Janie, nobody will come. Well, I said, well, actually, um, <laughs> the gay choir is coming and St. Andrew's choir is singing. So, you know, if, if that's who's there. But I said, now, you, you, you don't trust God very well. I said, because we're going to have a great time. So watch this. That day, I said, the Reverend James Noel is going to be preaching. And that day that I remember like yesterday, and any of you who were there, it was standing room only, standing room only in the church, in St. Andrew Presbyterian Church, where they said, oh, Janie, you can't have it there. So watch this. Of all the many things that James said, he said this. He said, Janie Spar, I will teach you everything about what it means to be black, and you teach me everything of what it means to be gay, and we will do wonders here. So he said this, what black child has to go home to their mother and say, mama, I'm black. But what black child has to go home to their mama and say, I'm gay? We got a lot of work to do here. He said, so James and I went into Marin City and we met with lots of folks and we heard the stories, maybe much like the testimony of you heard last night about what black men have to go through around sexuality and the stereotypes and all the things that happened. And the last story I'll tell you here is this. To do this ministry, it took a little bit of money. The first, the first money that came in and you didn't even have a secretary at that time. And we got a check from the first church ever for this ministry for $1,000. You never forget people who put their money where their mouth is. You never forget the people when it was unpopular, what it was like to give. So that's why I'm here today. I'm here to, first of all, thank you. And now I'm here to speak about these texts, because these biblical texts have everything to do what you've been doing all along with me. Watch this. I love this when it says, when it says about what James knew and what Floyd knows and what Carolyn knows and what everybody knows is this. We are always dealing with power over people. We are always dealing with domination systems, are we not? We are always dealing with that. So how do we do this around racism and classism and, and sexism and gender and all these isms? Listen to what Martin Luther King said to us. He said, first of all, people in power, name us. Then they frame us, then they blame us, then they shame us, then they maim us, and then they kill us. But the whole time, we are believing something different. The world is upside down. The world is upside down. And we are here. We are here to change that to right side up. Ready. These texts are so remarkable. Of course, John. So what happens? You've got to name and frame John because he's baptizing people. He's telling people that they're worthy. He's telling people that they're good. He's giving them hope. So what do they say? He said, and this is what Jesus said, this is the holy sky you're ever going to meet. This is the guy who is right and good. This is a guy that lives into righteousness. And you're going to say, what? Why, he has a demon, and that's what they do. They frame us, and they blame us, and they discredit us, because that's part of it. And then he says, and then I come along, and I'm eating and drinking with everybody, but I'm with the folks. I'm with the folks who want to be free. And so what happens is, of course, you call me a glutton and a drunkard, and that isn't such a bad thing anyway. Because I'm with the people that understand about oppressive systems and how they work and how they divide. I understand what that's like. So what does he do? He tells us 
this last this last verse that says, and wisdom shall vindicate her people, right? And who is wisdom? Wisdom is the one from Proverbs. Where both, where he's talking about Sophia. He's talking about God. He's scaring them half to death. He's saying, listen, listen to her. She's the one that went out. She's the one that went out in the streets yelling, simple fool, simple fields. You've got to wake up. I have come here to wake you up. Now, watch this text. It's so great. It says, we played the flute. See this generation, right? We played the flute and you don't dance. Well, what happens? By the way, Deanna Noel taught James how to dance. Watch this. To dance means you've got to be in your body. You've got to be embodied. So he's talking about you've got to know yourself. You've got to be in your body. So we play this beautiful music. Who is in her body but Carolyn Anderson? Good goddess, right? Who would believe? You've got to be dead not to feel when she's doing this music, right? So this embodiment. And so he's saying you've got to be in your body. You've got to know what that is. And why? Because if you're in your body, then maybe you see somebody in their body. Maybe you can be present with somebody where they are. And then some of the words are like this. And then we wailed. We wailed. We heard a dirge and you didn't weep. That's the best of all. How many of us have ever lost somebody? How many of us have lost a loved one or our whatever it is? And how many of us have ever wailed? I want to see hands. How many of you have ever hurt so badly in your gut that you think I can't get up tomorrow? I can't even get up now. How many of us have wailed? And this is what Jesus says. He said, if you're not wailing, then you don't know. If you're not feeling it, because if you're wailing, you're feeling. And if you're feeling, that means you're alive. And I want you to be alive because so many in this generation are walking along dead and they're asking this question. How can I get more rather than how can I share more? Oh, and he made him so cranky, didn't he? Because he said that women and men were equal. Because he said that children were, were property, were the kingdom of God. And then he would do things like this. He would say, he would say, how come, how come I healed 10 of you and only one of you came back to say thank you? And that was a Samaritan. Well, that took him over the edge. Because he's a, he's a man who believed in the universality of God. That God invites Everybody, absolutely everybody into this, into being alive and awake because he knows, he knew, and we know, we know that dominations collapse when people who are oppressed raise up and say, how do you do? I'm here. I'm at the table. So watch this. For those of us that were gay for a long time, we were told that we were terrible and we were dirty and we were awful and all this kind of thing. And one day we woke up and said, hey, hey, church, we're here and we're sitting beside you and we're in your family and we're your friends. So here we are. And that's when the church got upset. The church got upset and the Domination, get, domination, get upset when people stand up and say, I'm here. I'm here and God has made me worthy. That's when domination systems begin to collapse. When oppressive systems, and watch what they do, they divide us. They said, well, we're going to give you so much money to these people and so much money to this. Watch this. That's that's the rule. So this is what Jesus said. I'm going to take you from power over relationships, and I'm going to teach you partnership. I'm going to take you from patriarchy to partnership. That's the best thing. Because he said, don't say to me about feeding that we can't feed the whole world. Don't tell me that when we can all share. It's about sharing. He taught us all of this. And then, 
in your history, right? Here you go, all the way through. You have these pastors. You got these people keep saying, come on, come on, we're awake. And then you have Carolyn, like I said, you'd have to be dead not to feel, right? She just makes you feel. And then you have Floyd Tompkins. Dear heaven, what do you know about Floyd? You know, he's not only a great preacher and a great teacher, but wait a minute. He is one of the most imaginative people I have ever known. Just like James was an artist. This man is an artist with negotiation. He has an imagination and a creativity like look out. So what happens now in my community? It's now all about transgender people. It's all about, dear heaven, here they come. Isn't it enough that it was about lesbian and gay? Dear heaven, now they're talking about transgender people. Well, watch this. Who are the people that are most, who are killed, who are killed transgender people? It is women of color, transgender. Hundreds are killed a year. Why? Because they are challenging all these boxes of gender. Right now, at the, at the center here in Marin, they have grandparents groups and family groups. They have youth groups about all these kids that are using words like non-binary, like gender fluid, all these things, because they're saying, we're not going to be boxed in by this is what it means to be a man, and this is what it means. To, they're saying, there's a galaxy of genders. Well, that's about, you know, I have a grandson who is nine years old who says to me, Grandma, look at all these things. Look at all these flags that we have here. Look at all these gender and sexuality. He's nine years old. He's teaching his grandma about these things. Why? Because our children keep saying, keep awake. Keep awake. Come on. I want you with me. I want you with me. Every faith community we go into, there isn't somebody who says, my grandson is becoming my granddaughter. Will you help me, Reverend? There isn't a place. Why? Because God keeps expanding us. Keep saying, come on, come on, look at this. We can all be free together. So you got this man flow. So who did I go to? So when we began to look at what it means to be transgender, we found out that in Green Bay, California, there are doctors that have been doing affirmation surgeries for 15 years we said, well, why, why isn't the church involved with this? We got we to gotta have a house where people can come who are safe. And it's going to be run by faith people, by people who can feed us, who can be with us. And we have all these faith communities in Marin that are feeding transgender people. Do you have any idea what our transgender people are going through? Oh, my God. These were the people that said we were awful. These are the people now that are feeding us and asking and no judgment. No judgment. It's absolutely miraculous. So who do you think we went to first when we did this? Who, you know, we went to Floyd. Just like I went to James in the beginning. So we went to Floyd Thompson. We said, hey, Floyd, let's, let's have a dream of a house on the seminary campus that will be safe and beautiful for our people. Because the doctor said they need safety and they need community. And what do you think Floyd did? Well, you know Floyd. He went out and he talked to people because he said, I know what it's like to be told no, and these people need our yes. And what do you think? Three years ago, we opened a house on the seminary campus in which our people are there. And this last week, we had for the first time a mother and a father. Usually we have a mother or a father. We had a mother and a father there with their child that was having affirmation surgery from the Midwest. And this is what they said. Oh, they said, Jenny, once our family finds this out, they're all going to say no to us. And they're going to say we're terrible. And they're going to tell us we're all going to help. But you know what? God loves our child and God loves us. We're going to do just fine. 
So what do I owe to St. Andrews? I owe you my vocation. I owe you my life because I'm able to be out there partnering with other people to change people's hearts and minds because somebody walked into a room and said, it ought to be Janie Spar. And somebody still is walking in the room and saying, I'll help. It's you, St. Andrews, that began this ministry, this Spar Center now, just right in Corridor Madera, the Presbyterian Church started a gay ministry. What do you think of that? So anytime you want to know how wonderful you are and how God has blessed you and me in this partnership, I'm here. I'm here and raising my hands. Blessing. Thank you with all my heart. Thank you with all my heart for our partnership. Amen. God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life, God who was and is and is to come, God who loves us and wakes us up and calls us into partnership, we now go in peace to serve you, to serve the world, and to serve a future that we do not know based upon the wisdom of the past that we walk through. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Hallelujah.